Real Talk is proudly sponsored by Huawei P20 Pro and MTN. Each week for 10 weeks, we're giving away the latest Huawei P20 Pro and 10 gigabytes once-off MTN data to 10 amazing storytellers. All you have to do is share your special moments with us. Follow at Huawei ZA and at MTN ZA and tag us with hashtag Huawei P20 and hashtag Real Talk Moments. We want to see and hear your stories and create lasting connections across the country. Each week there's a different theme, so keep checking our social pages for details and you could be a winner. Good evening and welcome to Real Talk here on SABC3. I'm your host, Azania Mosaka. Well, tonight we'll be sitting with women. Women all over the world have been breaking the glass ceiling everywhere. And so, since the dawn of democracy in South Africa, this has somewhat accelerated. One industry that has had and has been a male preserve for many, many decades is undoubtedly the radio industry. But tonight on Real Talk, I'll be shining the spotlight on your ultimate favorites, your ultimate women on the radio, on the airwaves, as they share their personal journeys of trials and triumphs in this ever-growing and fast-changing industries. Not only have they stood the test of time, they've also been consistent in their craft and inspired many who have followed in their footsteps. It is with great pleasure to welcome my first guest tonight, who's enjoyed more than 18 years in radio broadcasting. And she's also the first black female to host a drive time show on a public broadcasting station. So today, she is one of the prominent voices on Lisedi FM's Monati Breakfast Show. So please join me in welcoming the birthday girl. <laughs> and uh, and uh, she's of course here with us. Some call her Sipati Munono Seoke, but she's also popularly known as Twasa. Happy birthday! Thank you! You are oh looking fabulous! Thank you very How's much. How's your day been so far? Oh. And you get to spend it with us. How oh. nice. I'm super excited. This yeah. is like the cherry on top. Mm. It started with a breakfast show and it was a party all round <laughs> from up to six to nine o'clock. <laughs> I had a fantastic time and the messages have just been pouring in from family, from friends, from fans. It's just been fantastic. So I was talking about you being at broadcasting <laughs> for 18 years and now we need to do the sums. And like, how old is Twasa? I turn 40 today. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Welcome to Yay! the club. I'm 41. How does it feel? Oh, it feels awesome. <laughs> For once, I don't have to edit what I say. I can say it and they say, I am a whole, that's why Babu I fell. <laughs> <laughs> and that license just gets bigger and bigger and uh, bigger as the years go by. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mare, <laughs> the other day, I was on a treadmill racing against my 22-year-old self. And I think I, I, I think physically I feel I feel much better than I felt when I was 22. Yes, um, mentally, I, yeah, spiritually, yeah. always. I'm in a great space. Mm. The Lord well, no, 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 no. Oh yeah, puta di cha. Hey. Allah, Allah. The place of the mountains. <laughs> it is such a glorious and special it place. Is. It is. You know when you drive in and you're just hit by this mm. vista. Yeah, of o, these hills. Unku aki Golden Gate di hauto kyan. Ir hau kena hantu bitu aki thaba yabu chabel. Hau sheba hule manu bone Mount Oxos. Eh, o sheba thaba zani zamarena. It's 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 totally beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. So you go home often. Kya leka watu ba ki tozi chance. Saiki watu ba ki tle hau tenga di suitcase wale. Utleka boka. Yeah, reya sebe. Watu sa hopol utleka boka. Nge palami ka one fifty. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and all I had was a bag, and now I'm to a pillow, so I'm going to go home and I'm going to go home. So I'm going to go home and then I get to go home and, and just be with family. Yes, yeah. and just breathe in that fresh, fresh air. Ooh, yeah. Place. Absolutely. So you actually started in management yeah. when you were there yeah. at a community radio station. Okay. So the transition to being on air? What's about what I think? It's, um, Kiki man, Siri so masula, and so me keep it like a bit of camouflage, or the bread, whatever. I don't want to be radio, what's about when? And I, you know, I don't know what that means. At the time, like in the University of the, at the time, University of the North Fakwa branch, studying towards my BCom degree. Mm -hmm. And she, and he said, look, restart the radio station, rejoin. So then I went in, in as a finance manager. Right. Nekitama, I got the file, I got the show, but hey. 
like our fans. You know what I mean? And then we went for training, got Classic FM. That was the first time Kike Nakahara, a radio studio. Wow. We had to train on a personalities because the license was to be given in the year 2000. Mm, mm. But before that, then we had auditions. Got the auditions. So I trained people. Had to channel on air. Now I went on air, a different radio station. I see. Yes. That's beautiful. And then, of course, coming to Johannesburg. Yes. And you've been with Lisedi. For all 18 years. For all, exactly. Yes. Exactly, which is exceptional. You are like part of the, the yes. chairs. Yes. Mm. 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 I believe the chairs have come and gone. You're <laughs> still there. You're, the studios have been upgraded, you name it. You're a still whole, there. A whole. A whole. And I remember, uh, like, each year part was my first experience on, a, on, on the graveyard shift. Yes. And the person who handed over the desk was Puleng Tulo. You know, I've had an incredible journey, let's say. Kiopula, Tate Pula Pula, Lintate Tulo, Bambozabare. But then, you speak English so well. Why don't you try out for like a Metro or a 5FM? Uh, why Lisedi? And I said to them, look, it, it's the turn of politics in this country. Yes. I want to be part of a movement. And talk about language, yes, like about language. I'm mamezing mahaying. Ang kukreka puwe ya haya lezuele. Liam mamezing khouting. I hope pule hay ham mamez. And then talk about language, yes, like hore puwe yesu. Liyo na ike hanya di chabing. And that's what I wanted to do. And and Lisedi was the only platform. Oh, oh, that could give me into a hore. Kikene kahara a platform esoka by chwatwa and really pioneer something a long hore it is significant. Your spirituality has been a part of your journey, like so intertwined yes. with your career. Yeah. But what is interesting is that you became a born again Christian at the tender age of 14. Yes. Not many 14 year olds are so <laughs> clear about where they are spiritually. Yeah. What was going on in your head? Bon, I can now re my mother died when I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. And I think from that point onwards, you start seeking, oh, you're forced to grow up and you start asking real questions. Yeah. And because my mother was a teacher, I started grade one. Oh, you're one of Sub those, like S at S six, R at five Yeah, or at five, you know, uh -huh. so matriculated like in the 16. So I think, you know, I was seeking at the time, I was Sunday school and eventually my next door neighbor, born and you can actually have a relationship with him. And I was attracted to the concept of having a personal relationship with Jesus. And yeah. I was like, okay, yes, I don't know, there's a little prayer why rappel or boba shop. And, <laughs> and, I, and I went into my room and I prayed a little prayer and, and, and it's and true to God, I had such an amazing experience with him. And that experience of his presence has stayed with me and informed every decision I have had to make How you along the way. Life. Yes. How you live your life. Absolutely. Well, we've got a special message. Oh. For you. You on your birthday Aibu. from someone who's been a great spiritual mentor. Okay. Take a look. Happy birthday, Sebati. Enjoy your 40th birthday. Uh, from all of us here at Gateway Church International, we wish you a wonderful birthday. May you enjoy it with your friends and the loved ones. Enjoy it, Sebati. God bless you. My pastor is yes. on TV. <laughs> What has he meant wow. to guide to you? He is amazing. Um, he he has helped me to to build. He has helped me to enter that phase in my life where focus Sabu Pilobaka is about significance. I, I I've been famous. I have I have done shows. I have done. I think I'm at a point in my life, Moilonghore, as Veronica Mohapi said on air today. Mm. It's it's mm. we we casting off fear and we're just doing what one was meant to do, and he has taught me to 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 be real, and really approach life with truthfulness. Absolutely. Because industry yaruna sometimes re famous. Mara bata bata bara na chale. Mm. Mm. understand. Mm. And so and you also have to be real about yes. your own condition, your own circumstance. And he's not afraid hundreta nete. He's not afraid of losing the relationship. I'm flat Yes, because you're known, you're on the radio. Absolutely. You all, we all need someone like that who yes. will ground us. Yes. Um, you have hosted, like you said, it was the graveyard slot, which <laughs> yeah. is a great training ground. I started yes. there too, so I can appreciate the sacrifice yes. and the hard work there. <laughs> and then afternoon drive. Yes. Uh, and now with your show in the morning, you've been surrounded by these male voices. Right. So has it always been difficult to be heard? Has it been difficult to be heard? 
What's about ke ke khola le hlono lo laka ko re ke hudisitswe ke ntatwa ka was raised by my dad. And because my dad never made a distinction between my brother and I. Uri hudisitse handle ka o tswana. To a point out na ke na conscience ya hore se jona se dutsi mo no tswantse ke stroso go bane ke le ngwanana. Ke stroso ba bane se ba ka bohlaswa. So when I went into the the business, ke khola ke approach tse jwalo. Hore masia sia ne mahloka lebelo ya sena se ka ja mai a te. I I I went in ka ntwa hore I'm not playing to participate. I'm playing to win. To win, yes. So, because my pets in the ball growing up, I was playing soccer at a time before there was ladies soccer. And I was playing for the senior male team at high school and varsity. So, can I just want to So, I was like, I'm going to I intimidate with male ness. I have that. The most how boo. Yes. But all what I do on so open a lento say. Yeah, you don't sound right. Manu na wa tella. Manu na ha ha juang ha juang. Empa kya kolan twen two seats enga shonya kai kore. I have to say, my dizi so ake on two seats because how kaba wa wa build a complex. Right. Yeah. Right. And we'll talk about some of those dynamics with the other guests a little bit later. But here's another message from one of your colleagues. And let's take a look. This is a special message dedication for Twasan. It's her birthday today. So, I don't know if I call her C, but this is the day that we got her and stuff. To me, she's like a sister. Uh, she's what we call a destiny helper. Everything around me, she is the one who inspired it. She's the one who has resourced it. She's the one who connected it. So with that, give a happy birthday and thank you for everything. On behalf of everyone who does not have this platform, for them, other destiny helpers to you. I hope your day has been fine thus far. <laughs> Let's see if by the end of this evening, <laughs> okay. so that just shows the connection because it's a team, it's a family. It is. It is. It is. And some of the, a lot of the work that we do, as you said, is purpose driven. Absolutely. So even the people that surround you yes. have to be on mission. Yeah, no. Kakisho Sibudi was the first guy I actually came to Joburg with in mm. Atoraki Chicken Pot the very following day. He used to be my dancer for that matter, and today he's my producer, which is an amazing <laughs> thing. Um, but, but radio, 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 there is no platform like radio. Nothing like it. It's nothing get out like of the it. mind. Yes, oh, yeah. nothing like it. <laughs> and we'll talk about the areas in which it's grown. Sure. Some of the threats, perhaps. Yeah. that have started to enter the space. There'll be more with Twasa a little bit later on, so we're not done with her yet. The birthday girl, of course. So after the break, I'll chat to another trailblazer in the world of radio broadcasting about her 21-year-old career sure. in radio. That's Sureshni Ryder from 5FM as she joins me next. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Real Talk on SABC3. Tonight, I get to sit down with some amazing women who have made their mark in radio. Sureshni Ryder is a familiar name in the national radio broadcasting space. And it all started when she was a journalism intern at P4 Radio, where many other great radio voices were born. Sush now celebrates 15, 15 successful years at 5FM currently. And she's the news anchor on uh, the weekday breakfast show. So please welcome Welcome, the very bubbly and award-winning radio host. She's a newsreader, she's an MC, Sureshni Ryder. Uh, Great to have you here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Azza. Thank you so much. When you said 15 years, I was like, oh, I've been in this industry for, for a long time. 15 at 5 At 5 FM and 21 altogether. Exactly. Yeah, let's do math. <laughs> <laughs> That's not too hard. No, not That too one's hard. not too hard. Just like Twasa in my 40, just turned 40 as well. So, yeah. It's Welcome. Good. Thank Welcome you. Welcome to the other side. Thank you for <laughs> having me here. Yes, I know. So happy Ganesha Day. Thank you. So, so what is this what what's the significance of this day within the Hindu faith? Okay, so Ganesha Chaturthi is a day that celebrates uh, Lord Ganesha and people might know him symbolically as the elephant. And that's often the symbolism that we see everywhere. Yes. Uh, so Hindus around the country are celebrating somebody that brings prosperity and wisdom and peace. And we look to him to remove our obstacles in life. And that's the person that we believe can remove all of that. And I think at the same time give us many learning moments. Um, so it's a very special day to be with family and to yes. celebrate one of my favorite deities. I feel so privileged. Thank Chata you. decided to spend her birthday 
with us. You're spending what should be a day where you're in prayer and with yeah. family here on the show Aww. as we share it with our viewers and your listeners Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. And it was, it was so special today because um, I would never would have imagined that Five of Him be explaining these kind of things to uh, the multicultural audience that we that we have and we speak yeah. to every single day. So it was so special that Roger wanted to like find out more about it and allowed me the opportunity to share. And that's one of the best things of being on that show. So your uh, career started in that kind of, uh, what would, uh, not the standard way, but because there isn't one particular yeah. way of getting into this, but you started with youth radio, yeah. then it was a regional station. You know, it's had this systematic progression yeah. <laughs> and now you're on this national platform. Yeah. Did you design it that way? Was this part of the plan? I'd like to think that <laughs> uh, we're given this life with a purpose and I think my purpose was to be in this particular arena, but go step by step, a step. And I think generally that speaks a lot about who I am. I like doing things step by step so I can learn. Mm. Um, I studied journalism and in our third year we had to get in-service training. And I ended up at Durban Youth Radio, mm. which was based at college, at uh, UKZ and Howard College. And then from there, P4 Radio came along and said, we're looking for journalism interns to study and become beat reporters. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm in. And I got to work with Polani Guala, like hero. Um, and then from there, PBS radio bit me because then I got into be part of the Lotus FM community, which obviously spoke to a completely different target market yes. and audience. Yes. And it spoke to me being a uh, you know, South African Indian and my role as a young person and then how I was transitioning as somebody who went through a Model C upbringing mm -hmm. into this traditional thing. And then my dream was always at 5 FM. I think I always kept it at the back of my mind. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. Um, and that chance opportunity just happened after four years of being at Lotus FM. I was like, I've got to get this thing. This is, it's driving me. And How did you get in? Because that's one of the most common questions that people ask. So yeah. yes, the internship, I understand. Getting into P4, yeah. I can understand because there was that call. But then getting into a big station like 5 FM where program managers sit with <laughs> heaps and heaps and heaps of demos. I'd like to think a little bit of luck, a little bit of destiny and a lot of hard work and thanks to the guy that worked at the post office because I made five demos to go to stations all around the country. 5FM was the last disc and I remember clearly saying to him, nah, white rock radio station, they're never going to take yeah. me and we were doing yeah. this because ma'am, you paid. I'm like, no, but I'm not sure. <laughs> and luckily he sent it because within 24 hours, they were the first radio station to phone me and I thought, I'm being pranked. So I'm like, it's okay. It's fine. I know it's a little, wow. it was a big dream to have. And within 24 hours, and so I didn't tell my parents because I was so scared. Um, so I made up this lie. No, I've got business in Joburg just to go for the audition. I signed a contract immediately and they kept saying, no, don't worry. It's, you work within the SABC family we'll see how it goes I was like oh it's okay and then by Friday morning I was told you need to be in Joburg pack by the weekend bags. pack my bags I was on air that following weekend and my first stand-in was for Nicole Fox on this <gasps> massive nighttime show and I was like I don't even know who Nicole Fox is so it was it was just a just a beautiful thankful opportunity and I'll I'll never regret it I love it I'm sounds so, so charmed it is but now here you are yeah. early mornings mm. you have to get into the <laughs> early morning thing yeah. of course waking up particularly early to work with the crazy one Roger Good. he is so crazy I love him he is so Roger and I share a birthday so I'd like to think he's kind of my twin and him and I he was the first person I met at 5FM and when you open the studio door, here's this dude with pajamas on and crazy. And in the first three seconds, <laughs> when's your birthday? I'm like, 25th of October. <laughs> Yay! And there is it. And we've kind of like just synced and it's here. Like that beautiful dream has just all come together. And that show is phenomenal. Uh, look, I was lucky to work early mornings, 47 a.m. I've been used to juggling the different yeah, time yeah, slots. So yeah. I don't think I was afraid of the time. Getting up now, 4 o'clock is like, oh. Uh -huh. yeah. With the little one in the house as well. Yes, who's so going to school. Yeah, right, she, so yeah. we've got a special message. What? From Roger. No. <laughs> here's, here's what he had to say. My earliest memories of Sarishni would most certainly have to be that uh, orphanage that we rescued her from when she was young. And then over the years, she was desperately trying to find a man and no one would have her and then I introduced her to an old friend of mine that I met in a rave club in Berlin one night Lee Ryder Woo and she always said to me she wanted to be a great news anchor one of the best like Ron Burgundy from Anchorman and look at her now she's the greatest that ever lived <laughs> Do you see what I work with? I see what you work with. <laughs> Where's your mustache? If you're dying to be like Ron Burgundy. I'm here, him. girl. I'm here. Here we go. Hey. <laughs> He's so proud. He is. So the beauty about your career, yeah. so she's that you've done different shows mm. and you've hosted the 5FM Top 40. I mean, a Top 40 is a different animal altogether. Just like afternoon drive and breakfast. Yeah. You know, it's a different 
particular type of show. Yeah. What were just some of the nuances for um, that? Can I tell you, when I was 16 years old, I used to obsessively listen to the World Chart Show with Brown Sugar, Ursula Stapelfeld. Yes. My mom gave me one job on a weekend is to clean the lounge. I had to sweep. That's all I had to do. I spent at least three and a half hours sweeping that one particular spot because all I was doing was engaging with her and like, oh, I want to be this woman. Yes. And that show, that platform was just phenomenal. I was so intrigued by the information that she gave. And I thought, one day I'm going to work towards the show. Mm. Um, and when I was so lucky to get it, uh, my little one had just been born. So she was literally a few weeks old and I had to get into this whole th leaving her behind with my amazing husband um, while I got to go for four hours. And I always said when I walked into that show, I would treat it like how I treat my husband. I would dress up. I will show up, I will give, show my best version of myself and I'll always be happy because that's, that's who I am. I, I think I like to give a lot of goodness and I know that target audience was 10 to 2 Saturday morning, everyone's frenetic yeah, and crazy yeah, and in shopping. A, car. Happy mm. voice, mm. make them smile, make them learn something and make them feel love through that's music. Beautiful. Yeah. But now you've transitioned to dealing with current affairs. Yes, yeah. there's a lot of fun that you guys yeah. have uh, away <laughs> from you being the news anchor. Yeah. How did that come about? Because not all voices can translate well mm -hmm. through delivering news. Well, I hope I'm translating well. Of course you are. <laughs> um, so I studied journalism, like I said, and part of journalism obviously was the news element of it. Uh, being a beat reporter at P4 um, and having, I used to produce a current affairs show. One of my first things was being a current affairs presenter and producer. Mm -hmm. So I always have been chasing this, tell the story behind the story um, and get into that mode of journalism, mode investigative reporting. Um, when I joined 5FM, they basically offered me two contracts. I said, listen, here's the situation. We have a position for you to do four to seven, and we also need a weekend news read. I was like, I'm in, I'm ready. Um, and that hunger to be in this industry, yes. and I knew that yes. when you join broadcast, you must be multi skilled, prepared to learn everything and make really good tea. Um, and I, I was like, I'm in, whatever you need, I'll do. What do you, what do you need? You I know? love because <laughs> that's how I got in too. Yes. As assistant producer, I had to do things like make the tea, yes. but also the most important responsibilities at the same time. Yeah. And you have to take it, you have to take yes. it all, you have to try and learn yeah. and have a 360 perspective 100%. of your the industry that you're in yeah so those are great lessons anybody who is trying to get into this business please listen <laughs> so closely to some of the nuggets that my guests are sharing yeah how do you, how does lee and your daughter pavani feel about sometimes their lives <laughs> and who they are gets inserted into the content i know so my little one pavani is eight she's just turned eight so she's in grade two so everything I now do is embarrassing. <laughs> Mom, that is not a cool word. Oh, you said what? So now I have to learn what cool is from her. Yes. Um, but she, she's my everything. And I will not be able to do half the things I'm doing without my amazing husband. Uh, Lee and I fell in love on air because yeah. he used to, uh, he knows radio so well. In fact, he's far more extroverted than I am, but he understands this industry. And I think if you have a partner that can give you the most amazing support, that will be your cheerleader and your wingman and your, and your biggest critic, then you've got the best balance in life. The two of them have helped me be a juggler and be a successful juggler. Uh, and everything I do is always like to make them proud. If I, I always think about the legacy we want to leave. And I think even for my family, my mom and dad are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. What legacy are you leaving for your child? What did you represent? So when she hears what Sureshni Ryder was all about, okay, that was my mom. Was she kind? Did she speak the yeah, truth? Yeah. Whatever she did, was it necessary? Was she good? Did she make a difference? So I think every day I'm very cognizant of that and I'm very conscious of that. Um, then every day I just try to live with purpose. Yeah, for well your work says all of that. Thank your you. work certainly says all of it. Well, Sureshni will be back also a bit later. Don't forget the lines are open to you. So after the break, I'll be joined by a woman who created a sacred space on radio for her listeners every Sunday. The phenomenal Tamin Gubeni joins me next. Welcome back to Real Talk here on SABC3. I'm Azania Musaka. Well, thanks for staying with us tonight because we continue our conversation with the leading ladies on the radio airwaves. My next guest is an astute conversationalist on her radio show. Having started as a TV presenter on SABC at the age of 17, she's been a magazine editor for Oprah Magazine and at one point made history hosting a current affairs talk show, uh, talk show on Radio 2000 and then a spirituality driven show which inspires and heals millions of South Africans every Sunday on Metro FM. Please welcome award-winning radio host of Sacred Space. She's a speaker and a businesswoman, 
Tami Ngubeni. Hello, Tami. Hello, Asa. We used to be <laughs> colleagues, used to be in the same building, so it's great to have but you But actually, there. you and I go back way back. I don't know if you remember, like, growing Go, go Pimville, growing up, like, you live just down the road from I my know. cousins. So we pretty much had those growing up moments. Yes. But I'm so delighted to be on your platform. So how does it feel to be on the other side? Because it's you had the show, uh, Life with Tami. Yes. And now you're the guest. And now I'm the guest. It always feels very odd because I'm so used to being the one asking the questions. But now when you've got to dig deep into yourself and you're the one who's answering the question, there's a bit of a, yeah. you know, yeah. like wearing your right foot on your left, <laughs> <laughs> on the left shoe. But, you know, I love it nonetheless. Yes. Yeah. You're clearly someone who works hard. There's no doubt about that. You work incredibly hard. If we look at some of the things you've done, edited Oprah magazine, you were at Tandy magazine, you hosted a TV show, you acted on Generations, you're a businesswoman. So there's no way you could have gotten here without it. Where does that ethic come from? You know... As I, it's doing what you love, I'm so driven by passion and I'm so driven by the things that make me feel alive. Uh, I was asked a question once, how is it that I'm an actress, you know, I was doing Josie H, which is actually on, on core at the moment. How mm. can I do all of these things? And I just say, for me, it's about exploring different parts of myself. Each one of them is as valid as, as the previous one. Yeah. And when I'm doing that, I'm completely that. You know, I, we're not, we're multidimensional beings. And we need to give ourselves the permission to explore all of who we are, yeah. the entirety of our fabulosity. Because you only get and to do this once. You only get, once. You only get to do this once, Ava. Mm. And I'm one of those people who say that when my time comes, I, I want to die empty. You know, as, as Miles Monroe said, you know, die empty. Yes. Having explored every single thing, followed every single passion and pursuit, and then made a choice towards the end. Oh, and there was that glimmer, that spark of Sacred Space. That's a very special show. It's been, it's had, it's, it's just stayed the course for all these years. Can you believe that next year, Aza, is 12 years of the Sacred Space? Yeah. Literally 12 years. And how it started is, I've always experienced myself and known myself as a spiritual being, like spirituality, understanding God, the world, the universe, who I am, my place in this entire, you know, matrix of, of existence has always been very important to me. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, I'm going to cut a long story short from my, you know, temple living days to writing for True Love magazine. I actually had a column yeah. on True Love magazine called My Sacred Spaces. And, and then that eventually evolved into, into the radio show, which is now celebrating 12 years next year. And it's such a gift, such a privilege, such an honor. I think for all of us as yeah. South Africans to be able to gather in such a sacred space and, and to worship and, and just to be together. There's, there's something that you bring to life in that show. Uh, and there's something to be said for energy on radio because it's not just what you are saying, the music that you're playing. There are a couple of elements that help to bring things to life because there's no doubt tuning in, um, you're able to be uplifted. You're able to also delve into yourself, listening to your show. So would you agree that there is this conscious effort to make sure that that energy is there? You know, that my, there's my that particular attitude oh. to that show that sets, sets it apart. My entire mandate with the sacred space is just to rock up. Yeah. Just to pitch and be, be there. And whenever I go into the sacred space, I'm always, Holy Spirit, you take over. Lord, you know who's listening. You know what their needs are. May you minister to them in a way that makes sense to them. You know, so it's not about me. It's about me just being a conduit at that particular time. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm conscious of. And I, I became so much more conscious of it during a time in my life when I didn't feel like getting up in the morning, Aza, when I myself was feeling down. And you know what? Things were actually not that great. Mm -hmm. But I had to get up every single morning and be there on the sacred space. And that's when I realized that it's about releasing, it's about surrendering. Because if Utami Ngubeni was sitting behind that mic yeah. and it was me on my own, I would probably be like, okay, guys, I'll see you next week. Yes. Or whatever the yes. case may uh, be. Next song, next but song. Next song. But as I know that you know this as a broadcaster yourself, that when you sit behind that mic, mm. something happens. You know, something happens which is just bigger than yourself. Yes. And it's just that relationship between you and everybody who's listening. But it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation, even though you're talking to the masses. Is this multiple? It's, yeah. it's a multiple, but it's very yeah. personal and it's very intimate as well. Yes, that's what makes it such a special medium. Really so then you did something that was almost unheard of. You did a current affairs show <laughs> on Radio 2000. And then you were doing this at Metro as well. Mm -hmm. I remember lots of us like, oh, it's possible? <laughs> I said to God, oh God, it's possible? Yeah. That's literally what it was. Um, you know, for the first time ever, 
one a broadcaster being on two different platforms but doing entirely different shows mm -hmm. but for me it made sense you know for me i looked at it i removed myself from the situation and almost have like a topographical view of what's going on in my life yeah and i'm one of the players in this when we talk of the sacred space it's living from the inside out it's spirituality it's our connection with god but also when we look at our current affairs our relationship with God is not devoid from yes. the reality of now. How we feel spiritually is not devoid it's, of the it's challenges not, it's we not have. It's not devoid. Like yeah. our, our, our spirituality has got to be practical. Mm. We've got to dominate in every single sphere, whether it's in entertainment, it's in finance, it's in governance, mm -hmm. all of that. It's got to be a way of life. It's got to be a principle that meanders with you as you go through every single area yeah. of your life. It permeates all of and, those. And permeates every single part of your life. Well, I want to introduce a face that you worked with oh Aza, what are you doing now <laughs> i wonder <laughs> well all you have to do is take a look and listen okay hi my name is matapelo machokana i used to produce talk on 2000 that is on radio 2000 and that is how i met the beautiful and incredible tami guveni who's become a sister and just somebody that i can rely on on absolutely everything she's just an amazing energy to be around tami made my job so so much easier and it didn't feel like work i looked forward to going to work every single day and just being around her and just us informing our people and just educating our people it was just incredible i love her so much and i am so so proud of absolutely everything Everything that she has achieved she continues to inspire me on a daily basis as a woman she is a go-getter and I know that she has so much more to achieve Tami I love you you're an incredible human being continue to do the great work that you're doing continue to be inspir an inspiration to South Africans continue to just be an achiever I love you I love you I love you <laughs> oh and I love you too Matapelo your former wow, producer. my former producer. How are you messing up my mascara right now? <laughs> how are you just wrecking my that's face? That's our mission. Hey, that's our mission. Well, so mission producers, accomplished. Producers are like the analogy that I heard was that the presenter is the driver and the producer is the navigator. Mm. So they are so intertwined and a part and parcel of what we do and there isn't enough recognition in there fact. There isn't so. enough recognition for what producers do. I mean, we have the easiest part of the job, to be honest. Um, you know, even in any sort of production environment, the people who are behind the cameras, who are sitting in the control room, who actually make this possible, like they make us shine. Mm. You know, they, they make us look like we are all of this, but in truth, like we are only ourselves in relation to the work that they do. Yeah. It's such a team effort. Absolutely. And, and, and they haven't, like they're just not recognized Enough. half as much as mm. they should be. Mm. And speaking of team, you've added a new member. You know, the, uh, there was another milestone, a big milestone to Sacred Spaces with singer and pastor uh, Mr. Mtetwa oh, himself. <laughs> What's what, that been like, having a, gift. a co pilot for the show? What, what a gift. The thing with me is, it's not about anything else, about, rather than the spirit with which we come. Now, Kaya and I are cut from the same cloth, mm -hmm. and that makes it easy. Um, anybody who I think loves the Lord and is sincere and you know that they're doing this from the, the very core of their being, it would have worked out with anybody who was on that same trajectory. Yeah. And, and Kaya is definitely on that same trajectory. He's awesome fun. Yes. We, we, we get on like, like a house on fire. He's deeply spiritual. Are very wise mm. and he's, he's just such a gift no the and, show and didn't even miss a beat it was just like oh it was okay, this seamless. is what we're doing yeah. we're happy to go along for the ride and, and that's when you realize that it's not about the individuals yeah. really but it's about the spirit behind what the platform is really supposed to be about absolutely but before we wrap our segment with uh, tammy we've got a caller hello tandega hello yes good evening welcome you can chat to tammy hi Aza. hi the Tam. hi tandega oh okay so I'm actually on air myself. I had to run out and come, and I saw him even. I'm like, I'm definitely calling in. I'm definitely calling in. Oh, beautiful, <laughs> so, Tandega. So I worked with this is Tami on Radio 2000 and Metro FM, and especially on the sacred space. Um, I remember how we just used to rock up. We just used to rock up, and we'd let the Holy Spirit just direct us, you know, and she'd open the Bible, and the callers would call in, <laughs> and it was just, oh, man, I love you, Sam. you know, oh. there's so much you've done for me, you've inspired me in so many ways, <sighs> man, you oh. know I love you, and she always texts me to check up on me, 
you know, even with everything that's been going on, so she was just check up on me and be like, hey girl, how you doing? I'm like, no, I'm fine, yourself. You know, and I was watching my Tapelo speak just now, and everything that she's been saying is true. So Tammy is really, really, really a great person. And, you know, with all the guests that have been on the sacred space, um, that have come on and the callers, she's always just been herself. And, you know, there were moments when I'd see her cry because people are telling their stories. And it's yeah. like, oh, my God, this lady. You know, she's really just so connected to the show. Absolutely. You know, it just made my relationship with God just be stronger. And, oh, Tandega, that's a beautiful and, testament. Yeah. Thank you so, so I much because we can't say enough about how radio touches people's wow. lives. And that's evident from my tapelo to Tandega. Tandega, thank you so much for the call. God bless you and I love you too. Well, you're staying right there. Yeah. We're continuing this conversation. Come back after the break as Twasa, Tami and Sureshini all join me for a discussion on the growth of the radio industry, the power of women in the medium, as well as a whole lot more. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Real Talk. I'm still chatting to women who have built solid careers in the radio field. Back on the Real Talk couch is the host of Sacred Spaces on Metro FM, Tamin Gubeni, news anchor on 5FM Breakfast Show, Good Morning, and a host of uh, Munati Breakfast Show on the City FM, Twasa. Ladies, thank you for coming back. <laughs> Sureshni, Twasa, and Tami, yeah. there's a lot to talk about. <laughs> politics has its fair share of, or rather radio has its fair share of politics, politics right? Yeah. And we've all been there. We've all <laughs> been there. <laughs> did you ever find, um, did you find that there were enough mentors as you were coming up in your career? And did you find um, mentors in women, fellow broadcasters? Yeah. Um, if I could start, I was like, when I got to 5FM, for example, it was a massive commercial radio station. People took me underneath their wings immediately. I was in a program with Barney Simon, who's like legendary. Yes. Uh, and for a whole year, Barney sat and worked and taught me everything uh, in terms of the audience that I'm speaking to, the kind of presenter that I should go for every day, snoop sessions and research and like just building up character and telling me, don't be afraid. You're doing exactly what every other presenter, you're sitting on the same seat as Mark Gilman. You're using the exact same desk as everybody else. And I think that's the fear that a lot of people have. The radio industry is an amazing platform to teach you how equal it is because we all have to use the same microphone, yeah. mm. the same desk, and it's, it's your approach to how you want to see it. Okay. Uh, and phenomenal women, uh, Nicole Fox, Zoretta Jardine, uh, Brown Sugar. Did people. you ever connect with Ursula? Oh, uh, you uh, okay, oh and you know, you I was like, <laughs> oh. Yeah, and, and like Miki, you know, when you meet your idol, and she was more than that and sat me down and goes, Sush, who do you want to be and how do you want to break into this industry? And everyone's always ready to help. And I think there was a great sisterhood and there still is a sisterhood at Five of them as well as my, my colleagues like Roger Good. I mean, yeah, I learn yeah. every day from No, her, that's you know? that's great for you. Yeah. I didn't have the same experience. Oh, <laughs> I was actually about to say, yeah. I had a I had a very different experience. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, walking into a station that is very cultural um, at the turn of, of, of politics in South Africa, women had always been at the backdrop. I think women were right at the bottom mm -hmm. of the food chain, if you like um, so like if I spoke up in the meeting staff meeting it's fresh from varsity so I'm like eh, point of correction <laughs> eh, manager <laughs> I don't think we should look at it that way yes and as soon as we left one of the ladies pulled me aside and said uh, and mm -hmm. I, I was like, who so and so are they? Yeah, the reason why you don't know them is because they are not here anymore. Mm -hmm. Why did they go are they? Because they spoke like you. So when they say opinions, they don't necessarily mean contradiction. <laughs> they mean align yourself <laughs> with what has just been said. <laughs> so I had a very different experience. Me too. Basadi neba 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 tshaba. But but I found that women edited themselves yes, and edited yes, each other, yes, yes. And, and men didn't. No, I also mm. found that in the, the different moves that were being made, the biggest questions would come from women. Well, yes. Why is she getting that show? Mm. Yes. There wasn't that level of support, support to say good for women in broadcasting mm. in general, because I, I was the first woman to do a breakfast show on a commercial radio station. Mm. And it was like, and then? <laughs> Why? Yeah. Why? You know what I mean? So even the whispers and you couldn't, they, they, they were coming yeah. from women, mm -hmm. which I found disheartening. In fact, the coaches that I had, the mentors that I had were men. Were, were largely men. Mm -hmm. in, in my situation, Twasa, age has a lot to do with it. Yeah. Because I think when you're young, you're brave. And, and you say things and you do things. And I literally started 
before I actually even did the sacred space, I started reading news on Metro as a teenager before I went to, to the States to study. And then I had a bit of a break when yeah. I was producing television and then I came back to radio. But when you're young, you say what you, what you want, mm. you do what you want, mm. you are expressing yourself. And I think that is the advantage as well of, of starting young, yeah. but always, always being true to yourself and knowing your own strength and your own worth as an individual. And I like that because I remember being asked what kind of female voice do you want to be? And I thought, hey? what do you mean? <laughs> like, I just want to be me. And like I, was a told deep female. Women, no, I was told women don't listen to women. Yeah. Men don't listen to yeah. women. So it's either you're going to be one of the boys. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Or you're going to be, you're right. oh, uh, such a damsel in distress. Oh. Come and rescue me, Mr. Sports Guy. And you don't have to be either. No. Uh, just do you. Yeah. And, and, and perhaps that is the key to success authenticity mm. because you'll always be a really poor replica of yeah. anybody else True. but if you bring your best to the game there is something that people will connect with because people can smell yeah. something phony from yeah. a mile and off. as they say if uh, the two of us are the same then one of us is, irre is uh, irrelevant. irrelevant so yeah. Yeah. best to be yourself mm -hmm. but so you mentioned snoop sessions yes. how yes. awkward yes. are those oh. so for anybody who doesn't know oh. Snoop sessions <laughs> are when you literally go back, you sit with your producer, with your oh. program manager, and you listen back to your show. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so as of you, wh wh what gives you the creeps about Snoop sessions? <laughs> yeah. It's live, you're in the moment, you're mm. flowing. So yeah. you have to hear those errors, to have to, yeah. with I the red pen, mark yeah, your yes. own yes. homework yes. Yes. With, the, with people. Mm. Yes, we do our work in public. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, yeah. like, you're being marked constantly yes, yeah. doing it in public. Not everybody gets to, but we do our work in public. Yeah, I mean, no, when your true. colleagues and your managers are like nicer, Sush, explain for five bucks, <laughs> why for seven minutes you were speaking <laughs> about one, and you're like, <gasps> and then and it, how I would do it is like, if I get there, and I was very conscious of all the things I did in the show. Yes. So I'd go, oh no, Barney's going to pick yeah. up this, 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 this. So when the meeting would start, Barney, before you say anything, <laughs> I know it's over. I know, I know, I know it's I know it over. So let's just keep moving quick. Quick. <laughs> but there were so many, and they're learning moments for us. And, and I think that we should never be afraid of them because looking back, I'm like, I can't believe I did that. It and does we, get it, better, it, but it, it does. Just doesn't go away. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Just let's let it do. We do snoop sessions. Yeah. And, uh, you know, presenter style guide. But oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> no, he's in a talking shop right now. Oh. You're talking shop. Oh, Presenter style, style guide. Presenter style guide. Radio driver. That's the one thing in the style guide oh, that absolutely. you thought, oh, I'm rolling my eyes. Like, did you have to say that for that long? Did you have to yeah. speak for five minutes? And the thing, Corey, style guide mostly says that it's English stations. Mm. And about five two minutes, I'll boo. And this is what this is not. There's a lot to say. I'm like, 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 I'm like
the helper of the nation and people really believe it. Mm. So you can't really turn your eye mm. something at least as far as possible. I mean one of my colleagues is busy literally uh, building a house for somebody um, one of our team members and it, it was because we left in Raleigh and this family did not have employment yes, yes. and they did not have mm, so they you know and they, they had just lost their one hope mm. their one child who died mm. overseas so it's important it's that very this platform important. be used to transform lives. Absolutely. Yeah. So Absolutely. Tammy, have you also walked out of the studio and be confronted with someone in need? Oh, I don't need to walk out of the studio while I'm in the studio. Yes. Um, you know, especially because we've got glass partitions. So people from the outside will, will always come through and they're waiting for you as a trust are saying. And for me, it's an honor and it's a privilege to be in a position where people think they can knock on your door and you are able to assist. Yeah. Because also then you realize it's, you're not a one man ship. I've also got a, a foundation, but you're not even doing it on your own. There's a, a barrage of people who are willing to assist. Absolutely. So radio is about forming those connections and those relationships. Yes. When you're feeling down, you switch on the radio, you've got a friend. Yeah. You know, if you need upliftment, you switch on the radio, you've got a friend. You need information, you've got an encyclopedia, yeah. <laughs> you've got a friend. Mm. Yeah. You know, and so it's a, a, a privileged position to, to be in. Absolutely. So do you get much of that? We or actually, is the five audience like, oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're I good. We sort it. Yeah, we got Wi-Fi. We can <laughs> Google. <I'm> <laughs> I think for a long time the history of of being in a, a youth radio station like Five of Him has always been the the assumption that young people don't care. And Five of Him is really on the pulse of young people. We have an amazing CSI body called Young Blood Five, and through that people navigate the opportunity to talk to us. Um, please help us with our education. Let's help with uh, raising funds for children who don't have homes, or uh, we help out with SPCA. Right. We love animals, um, and each of us I think has presented presenters we're not just there to play the tunes have an awesome day or cheers bye <laughs> never I think a lot of us we take C it's like CSI for me personally is like my second skin I've always been passionate about it yeah. and like the, the ladies we all have I different foundations and we, we things speak yeah. to us and absolutely we're human beings I don't think you can actually do this no. job yeah, yeah. yeah. the way yeah. Yeah. but add one thing very quickly also I mean the SABC also has the foundation yes. Yes. so at times when we are unable to we're always able to take it mm. to yes. a higher level yes. so that it can be dealt with on a much larger yeah. scale yeah. the SABC foundation is also there. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much to all of you for oh. being here. But before we sign out, we've got a little surprise for our birthday girl. Yeah. 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 Earlier oh. on, there was a question of when are we having cake? Oh. Well, guess what? Kyo oh. Kuku hair. <laughs> but we've got to sing for her. Yes. Happy, birthday oh, wow. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. absolutely adore you. I want to thank all my ladies tonight. Oh, yeah. What they have in common is that they are hardworking, they're consistent, and best of all, they help us kickstart our mornings with their enticing breakfast shows. So I'd like to thank all of them for being here today and sharing their special occasions with us. And of course, we thank them for the impact that they have and the contribution that they're making. So remember to tune in to the Monati Breakfast Show with Twasa on City FM. That's from 7 to 9 a.m. Sureshni Ryder serves a hot breakfast too with Roger Good on 5 FM, 6 to 9 AM, and she who shifts the atmospheres. Tamim Gubeni <laughs> starts us off on a Sunday morning with the sacred space from 6 to 9 AM on Metro FM. So from all of us here on Real Talk, we'll see you again tomorrow for the Feel Good Friday show. Thank you and good night. Oh, Real Talk is proudly sponsored by Huawei P20 Pro and MTN.
Each week for 10 weeks, we're giving away the latest Huawei P20 Pro and 10 gigabytes once-off MTN data to 10 amazing storytellers. All you have to do is share your special moments with us. Follow at Huawei ZA and at MTN ZA and tag us with hashtag Huawei P20 and hashtag Real Talk Moments. We want to see and hear your stories and create lasting connections across the country. Each week there's a different theme, so keep checking our social pages for details and you could be a winner.